Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Empty Cloud Monastery. Uh, so this morning we'll be having another Sutta study session. Uh, so uh, this Sutta is uh, Sanghita Nikaya uh, chapter six, suttas number nine and 10. Um, and these suttas were specifically requested by uh, Yudi, one of our uh, regular participants. Uh, so we can start by paying homage to the Buddha and then we'll start going through the discourse. <clears throat> Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa buddhang tammang sanghang namasami So as mentioned, we'll be looking at a pair of suttas, Sanyutta Nikaya uh, chapter 6, which is number 9 and 10. So these are related suttas, uh, and they were requested by Yudi, as I previously mentioned. So as usual, I'll be going through the discourse in Pali and giving some translation and explanation as we go along. So the first one, Sutta uh, 6.9, uh, so this begins, uh, Savati Nidhanam, so this took place at Savati. So this is one of the the most common places where we have suttas from. And the Buddha spent a lot of time in Savati. Uh, and also he had a large community of, of monks uh, living in Savati. So this one says, Teno kopana samayena kokale kobiku abadiko hoti dukito balhegilano. So on this occasion, there was a, a monk, a bhikkhu named Kokalika, uh, who was uh, sick. So he was very sick and in a lot of pain. And it says, Atiko Turu Pacheka Brahma, Abhikantaya Ratya, Abhikantavanno, Kevala Kapang Jetavanang Oba Setva, Yena Kokali Kobiku Tenu Pasankami. So then uh, late in the night, a uh, Brahma named Turu uh, came to. Mm, the monastery, so Jaitavana Monastery, which was the main Buddhist monastery in Savati at the time, uh, and approached Kokalika. So uh, Brahma is one of the uh, higher categories of devas, of celestial beings. Uh, and like all other celestial beings in Buddhism, they're mortal. Their lives are, are temporary and limited, just like everybody else's lives. Uh, but the Brahma beings live exceptionally long lifespans. Uh, we measure their lifespans in eons, and an eon or, or kalpa uh, is about the duration of a universe. Uh, so we measure the length of a, a Brahma's life in terms of how many universal lifespans they live, which is a long time, hundreds of billions of years. Um, so this one came to visit the bhikkhu Kokalika. It says, Upasankamitwa veha sanktito Kokalikan bhikkhung e tarabocha. So having approached, uh, it stood in the air uh, and uh, spoke to the bhikkhu Kokalika. Um, this also is an interesting trait, by the way, of the uh, devas and brahmas. When they come to visit, uh, they uh, stand in the air. They usually don't lower themselves to the ground. Um, they hover in the air while speaking to the, the Buddha or the other monks that they're speaking to. Um, and um, the um, Brahma Turu, while standing in the air, he says to Kokalika, he says, Pasadehi Kokalika Sariputamogalane Suchitang, Pesala Sariputamogalana. So he's saying to Kokalika, like, you should have faith in Sariputta and Moggallana. Uh, you should establish a mind of faith towards these, these two monks. Uh, they are well-behaved. So Pesala means well-behaved. 
So Sariputta and Moggallana are the two main disciples of the Buddha. Uh, so Sariputta was considered foremost in wisdom and Moggallana was considered foremost in, in psychic powers. Uh, but they were, they were both arhants. In fact, they were friends before they became monks, Buddhist monks. Um, and they both attained full awakening by following the Buddha's instructions. Uh, and the Buddha uh, said that these two were the, uh, again, his chief disciples, his foremost disciples, and they were ones who were particularly devoted to helping teach uh, the other monks. So, of course, the Buddha did a lot of, of teaching himself, but he also deputized other advanced monks to also teach each other and help each other make progress on the path. And Sariputta and Moggallana were the, the foremost in helping and supporting their fellow monks. Um, however, as we'll see in the, the next sutta, which is again part of this series, um, the Bhikkhu Kokalika had a, a serious grudge against Sariputta and Moggallana. He really didn't, didn't like them at all. Mm. So on this occasion, the Brahma Turu is coming and saying, no, you really should have faith in Sariputta and Moggallana. These are really good monks. Um, Kokalika, so Kokalika replies to this. He says, Kosi Tuang Araso. He says, who are you? Kosi Tuang, who are you? And Turu replies, Ahang Turu Pacheka Brahma. He says, I am Turu, the, the solitary Brahma, the individual Brahma. Um, and this is also is an unusual term, by the way. The term Pacheka Brahma is very rare in the Pali Canon. Normally we just see Brahma or Maha Brahma or, or something of that sort. But to call them Pacheka, Pacheka means solitary or alone. Uh, this is quite rare. Um, so it's not clear to me why it's referred to as a, a Pacheka Brahma. Um, and it's, it's not explained anywhere, but perhaps it's a, a Brahma who lives in solitude, who lives separately from, from the other Brahma deities. So Kokalika says, Nanu Tuang Avaso Bhagavata Anagami Vyakato says, uh, weren't you declared by the Buddha to be a non-returner? So a non-returner is somebody who uh, is one step short of full awakening. So while as human, they come to one step short of full awakening, um, they've completely eliminated central desire and aversion. Uh, so there's nothing which draws them back to human existence. Uh, but they continue to live in uh, the Deva worlds, and in particular in the, the what we call the pure land, the or the pure abodes, the Suddhavasa, uh, the layer of the heaven realms, which is inhabited by non-returners on the path to full awakening. Um, and one of the characteristics of a non-returner is that after they've passed away as a human, they will never again be born as a human. Uh, so this is why they're called non-returners. It's because they don't return to human existence. So Kokalika says, Nanotong Avaso Bhagavata Anagami Vyakato, uh, weren't you declared by the Buddha to be a non-returner? He says, Atakin Charahi Idagato, then why do you come, come here? Why have you come here? If the Buddha said you're not going to return, why have you returned here? Uh, and he says, Pasa ya vanchate idang aparadang. He says, see, see how far you've gone wrong. So, and this guy just doesn't get it. I mean, he, he literally has a non-returner Brahma God come to him and tell him like, look, you really need to get your act together and stop. Uh, holding these negative attitudes towards two of the greatest monks in, in the Buddhist dispensation. Um, and Kokalika, instead of accepting that admonishment gracefully, instead he starts criticizing uh, the Brahma Turu for daring to come back to the human world in order to offer this piece of advice. Uh, so I actually kind of feel for Kokalika here. He's just his habit of wrong speech is just so strong. He can't, can't seem to stop himself from saying nasty things. Um, and then there's a verse here, and this verse is repeated in the next sutta. 
but I'll go ahead and, and go through it now and then just so you know it's repeated in the next sutta as well. So the verse says, Purisasa hijatasa kutari jayati muke. So this means uh, when a person is born, an axe is born in their mouth. Uh, an axe is your tongue. So uh, just as an axe has a sharp edge, it's our, our tongue also has a sharp edge. Yaya chindati atanang balo dubasi tang banang. It says, uh, by means of which a fool cuts themselves with their own bad speech. Yonindiyang pasang sati. Tangva uh, nindati yo pasang siya. So it says, uh, one who praises those who are blameworthy uh, and criticizes those who are praiseworthy. Vichinati mukena so kaling, kalina tena sukang navindati. So it says, with their mouth they accumulate bad luck. Uh, and because of that bad luck, they, they do not find happiness. Um, so this is pointing to the fact that we can generate a tremendous amount of bad karma through our speech, uh, through what we say, through how we say it, uh, through being um, unkind, inconsiderate, thoughtless, cruel uh, with our speech. We can accumulate a, a tremendous amount of bad karma, uh, which then makes it very difficult for us to live a happy life. Uh, both now and in future lives. And the Buddha says, Apamatiko uh, ayankali yo akesu dana parajayo. He says, uh, by comparison, this is just a, a little bit of bad luck uh, if you lose in gambling, if you lose some money gambling. He says, Sabha sapi sahapi atana ayameva mahanta taro kali. Uh, so here he's saying that, um, uh, let's see, I so this is a far, uh, far greater kind of bad luck, uh, when one harms oneself in this way. So he's talking again about how, when we generate bad karma through mm, wrong speech, you know, this is far more harmful, far more destructive, uh, what we've lost. Uh, than just losing a bit of money gambling. Not that you should gamble, by the way. He says, Yo sugatesu manang padosiye, satang sahasanang nirabudanang. So he says, one who uh, forms a mind of hate towards the sugata, so towards the Buddha. Uh, and sugatesu, it's, here it's in the plural, so it's towards any, uh, towards all sublime beings or, or any sublime being. So sugata in the suttas, most commonly is used to refer to the Buddha, but occasionally it's used in a broader sense to also include uh, other arhants as well, uh, which appears to be the usage here. So, yo sugatesu manang padosiye means one who forms a mind of hate towards any awakened being. Satang sahasanang nirabudanang, uh, this means for 100,000 uh, nirabuddha. So, uh, nirabuddha is a uh, uh, it's both the name of a, a hell realm, but it also has the sense of being a, a extremely long time, uh, extremely long period of time. Um, so Satang Sahasanang Nirabudanang would mean 100,000 years in a hell realm, uh, which is actually not that long of a time, as you'll see when we get through the next sutta. Chating Sati Pancha Cha Abudani. So Chating Sati. Uh, 36, Pancha 5, uh, Abuddha, again, name of a, a hell realm. Um, but it, and it also has the sense of a, a cancer or a, a serious illness. And it says, Yang Arya Garihi Nira Yang Upeti. So one who uh, criticizes or insults noble beings. Again, uh, noble beings here, meaning people who have some stage of awakening. Nirayangopeti, they arise in hell, and they appear in a hell realm. Vachang manancha panidaya papakang, because of having set their uh, speech and their mind uh, on evil. Um, so, uh, again, this is in reference to Kokalika in particular. So this monk who was known for 
saying nasty things about Sariputta and Moggallana, so two of the enlightened disciples of the Buddha. And even when approached by a Brahma who was a non-returner, he still insulted him. Um, so here the Buddha is pointing out, he's like, if one is continuously insulting anyone uh, or uh, harshly uh, misusing speech towards anyone, then that's bad karma. Uh, but especially harmful is to uh, verbally abuse or uh, maintain a mind of, of hatred and resentment towards uh, awakened beings, uh, people on, on any stage of awakening. Uh, because that's the kind of extraordinarily bad karma that can lead to rebirth in a hell realm. So then the uh, match to sutta to this, so the next one, Sangyutta Nikaya 6.10. So it's a bit longer, um, but it's on a, a similar vein. So it starts off, Savati Nidanang, so that's Savati. Atiko kokaliko bhikkhu yena bhagavate nipasankami. So the monk kokalika goes to the Buddha. Upasankami tva bhagavantang abhivadi tva ekamantang nisidi. So having gone to the Buddha, he sits, uh, pays respects and sits to one side. So kokalika, although he was grumpy towards uh, Sariputta and Moggallana, um, he was still respectful towards the Buddha, which is an interesting thing. Um, so, ekamantang nise no ko kokaliko bhikkhu bhagavantang etaravocha. So, when he was seated to one side, the monk kokalika said to the Buddha, Papicha bante sariputta mogulana papikanang echanang vasangata. So, he says to the Buddha, he says, Bante, sariputta and mogulana have evil wishes uh, and they are controlled by, by their evil wishes. And, uh, so when this was said, the Buddha said to Kokalika, said, Mahevan Kokalika Avacha. It says, Kokalika, don't say that. Mahevan Kokalika Avacha. Pasadehi Kokalika Sariputta Moggallane Suchitam. Pesala Sariputta Moggallana. So similarly to what Turu the Brahma said in the previous one, the Buddha says to him, like, no, don't say that. Uh, have faith in Sariputta and Moggallana. These are well behaved monks. Um, but Kokalika really doesn't get the point, so he carries on. So it says, Dutiampiko Kokaliko Biku Bhagavantangi Tarabocha. So a second time, Kokalika spoke to the Buddha and said, Kinshapi me bante bhagava sad dhaiko pachayiko. Atiko papichava bante saiputta mogalana papikanang ichanang vasangata. So he says, uh, although I have faith in the Buddha, uh, still, uh, it seems to me that Sariputta and Moggallana have evil wishes and are under the control of evil wishes. So this is actually quite remarkable in that even when directly told by the Buddha that his views were wrong and that he needed to change his, his ways of speaking, uh, Kokalika persists. Um, and it's interesting that he actually starts by affirming his faith in the Buddha, but then still continues to directly contradict the Buddha's own statements. So Kokalika was apparently particularly thick-headed and, and stuck on his opinions. And this just blows my mind. We find this in a, a few places in the suttas where somebody is directly corrected by the Buddha and, and they still persist in holding tightly to their wrong views. Um, so then again, the Buddha says to him, don't say that, uh, you should have faith in Sariputta and Moggallana, they're well behaved. And a third time, Kokalika still sticks to his view. He says, although I have faith in the Buddha, I, I still believe that Sariputta and Moggallana are, uh, evil and controlled by their evil desires. And again, the Buddha tells him, don't say this, this is not correct. And that's the end of that conversation. Kokalika apparently really doesn't get the point. So it says, Atiko Kokaliko Bhikkhu Uttayasana Bhagavantang Abhivadetva Padakinang Katva Pakami. So it says, then the monk Kokalika rose from his seat, uh, paid respects to the Buddha, and having done what was respectful, he left. So again, this is very interesting. Even though he 
directly refuted the Buddha's own statements, um, he still was very respectful uh, before leaving the, the Buddha's presence. Uh, so taking the time to bow to the Buddha before, before getting up and leaving. Um, however, he still has been accumulating a huge amount of bad karma, which is what comes to fruit next. So it says, Achirapakkantasa So shortly after uh, Kokalika left, uh, uh, So little blisters, the size of sesame seeds, appeared all over his body. Uh, so, and those blisters grew from the size of sesame seeds to the size of beans. Uh, and it goes on. So I'm not going to go through all of this, but briefly speaking, it goes from the size of beans to the size of chickpeas. Uh, and from chickpeas, it, it gets bigger and bigger. So going up, it lists several different uh, fruits that were common in the time of the Buddha. Um, and some of these fruits, we actually don't even know exactly what they were. Um, so a lot of it's just guesswork by translators. The point is, it grows and grows and grows until uh, eventually, it says, um, uh, they burst. Uh, and Pubanchalohitang Pagaringso. So they burst and uh, erupted in, in pus and blood. And it says, Atako Kokaliko Bhikkhu Te Neva Abha Dena Kalamakasi. Uh, and then the monk Kokalika, because of this illness, passed away. Uh, so, again, I feel kind of bad for this guy. Uh, but at the same time, he, uh, again, generated his own bad karma. Uh, so we can see the, the cause and effect relationship here. And it says, Kalan Kadocha Kokaliko Bhikkhu, Padumang Niryang Upapadji, Sariputta Mogulane Suchitang Aga Tetra. Uh, so after passing away, the monk Kokalika appeared in the uh, Paduma hell, so the, the lowest of the hell realms, um, because of uh, having produced this, this hostile mind towards Sariputta and Moggallana. Um, and I noticed in the comments, Yudi saying you. So just a reminder to Yudi that you selected the sutta, so... Uh, this was your own choice. So then uh, the sutta carries on. Atiko Brahma Sahampati Abhikantaya Ratya Abhikantavanno Kevala Kapang Jaitavanang Ovase Tva Yena Bhagavate Pusankami. So then the Brahma Sahampati. So Sahampati was one of the Brahma deities who was a follower of the Buddha, so a disciple of the Buddha who uh, had many interactions with the Buddha throughout the Buddha's lifetime. Um, and in fact, it's it's part of the life story of the Buddha that shortly after the Buddha attained awakening, the Brahma Sahampati was one of the first beings who came in and congratulated the Buddha, who came and spoke to the Buddha after the right after the Buddha attained awakening. So the Brahma Sahampati was one of the the very very first disciples of the Buddha, uh, and was there interacting with the Buddha throughout the Buddha's lifespan. Um, so normally when we talk about the disciples of the Buddha, we tend to focus a lot on the human disciples. But it's actually really important to keep in mind that the very first students of the Buddha were actually devas who came to see him immediately after he attained awakening. Um, so they caught on much faster than anybody else. Uh, in fact, there were devas who had been watching the Buddha for a very long time, waiting for the moment when he would attain awakening. Uh, so the Buddha had uh, Deva and Brahma followers uh, long before he had human followers. Um, anyway, so the Brahma Sahambati goes to the Buddha, pays respects and stands to one side. And while standing to one side, he says to the Buddha, so he reports to the Buddha that the monk Kokalika had died and been reborn in the uh, lotus hell, the Paduma hell. Uh, on account of having this hostile mind towards Sariputta and Moggallana. Um, and then it says the Brahma Sahampati pays respects to the Buddha and disappears. And so the sutta continues. 
So then at the end of the night, the Buddha addressed the monks. He says, Among Vikve Rating Brahma Sampati, so he reports that the Brahma Sampati came in and told him what had happened to Kokalika. Um, and so one of the monks asked the Buddha, he says, Evangvate Anyaturo Bhikkhu Bhagavantang Eteravocha. So then one of the monks asked the, the Buddha. So how long is the lifespan of somebody in the, the Paruma hell, the lotus hell? So again, this is the lowest of the, the hell realms. Um, and the Buddha replies, So long is the lifespan uh, in the Paruma hell. And it's not easy to calculate. Etikani vasani, this many years. Etikani vasasatani, this many hundreds of years. Etikani vasasahasani, this many thousands of years. Etikani vasasatasahasani, this many hundreds of thousands of years. Uh, so the Buddha is saying you, you really can't count it. Even in terms of hundreds of thousands of years, you can't really, it's not easy to calculate, not easy to get a sense of how long. Uh, it is to live in in the lowest of the hell realms, um, and so this is one of the the things that we see in terms of the the different layers of existence that the Buddha talks about, the different realms of being. Um, so humans live for somewhere around a hundred years or so, uh, and then as you go up, so each successive layer of the heaven realms, the lifespan is longer and longer and longer until you get up to the Brahma worlds where it's measured in, uh, again, lifespans of the universe. So you have Brahmas that live for the lifespan of thousands of universes, so very, very long lives. And then also as you go below the human realm, so right below the human realm, you have the animal world where most of them live much shorter lives than humans, some exceptions, but most animals live shorter lives than humans. Uh, but then you get into the, the hell realms and, and it actually flips and you have hell realms where, again, one's lifespan is extremely long. Um, and so this is directly related to the um, strength of the karma that leads you to that place. So if you have very strong, good karma, then you can be reborn in the, the heaven realms where you live an extremely long and pleasant life. And if you generate extremely strong bad karma, then you can be reborn in the heaven, uh, in the hell realms, where one has an extremely long and very painful life, very unpleasant life. Um, and then the Buddha gives this uh, long description of uh, trying to give some sense of just how long it is. Uh, in the lowest of the hell realms and, and correspondingly in the highest of the heaven realms. Um, so the, the monk says, Saka panabante upamankatung. Is it possible to make a simile? And so the monk's saying, Well, if you can't just tell me a flat number of how long it is, can you at least make a simile? Some way that I can understand. The Buddha says, Saka bhikkhu, it is possible. And he says, um, Sayatapi bhikkhu vi satikariko ko saliko tilavaho. So he says, let's imagine that you had uh, 20 cartloads of sesame seeds. Uh, so sesame seeds are very small. So imagine how many sesame seeds you could fit in, in a whole uh, truck. You've got 20 truckloads of, of sesame seeds. He says, Tato puriso vasa satasa vasa satasa achayena e kame kang tilang udareya. So he says, then once every hundred years, a person comes and takes one sesame seed from that pile. So 20 truckloads of sesame seeds. And once every hundred years, you take one. And he says, Kipa tarang koso bhikkhu vi satikariko kosaliko tilavaho. Imina upakena parikayang paryadanang So he says, you would more quickly, uh, you would sooner take away all those sesame seeds uh, uh, through this method, natreva eko abudo nirio, than 
would be the, the lifespan of one uh, Abhuda Niriya. So Abhuda is, again, one of the, the other layers of hell. So one of the not quite as bad layers of hell. Um, and he says, Sayatapi Visati Abhuda Niriya. Uh, so then 20 Abhuda hells. So the lifespan of, of 20 uh, people in the Abhuda Niriya. Says, Eva Meko Nirabuddha is the lifespan of a Nirabuddha hell. And it goes on like this. So going through several different layers of hell realms, which is kind of beside the point. Basically, the Buddha is trying to communicate that uh, the lifespan in the lowest hell realm is extraordinarily long. Uh, so don't get too caught up on the details here. I actually know one monk who actually tried to calculate all of this. Like he calculated how long it would take to remove, uh, like how many sesame seeds would be in 20 truckloads and then how many years it would take to remove all of those once every hundred years, then calculating through each of the hell, the hell realms and then finally coming to a number on about how long the lifespan of a person in the, the Paduma hell is. And again, it's kind of pointless because by that point you get to numbers which are so mind-bogglingly huge that they're really beyond our comprehension. Um, like, I mean, to be honest, most people have a hard time even telling the difference between 1,000 and 10,000 uh, or 10,000 and 100,000. Uh, like once you get beyond numbers which you can easily grasp, uh, it, it all just kind of blurs together. Um, so, uh, again, there are people who have calculated these sorts of things, but the, the point the Buddha is making is just it's a really, really ridiculously long time. Um, and the entire time that one is in a hell realm, it's extremely unpleasant. It's not the kind of place you want to be. Um, and so then the Buddha again states, he says, Parume pana bhikkhu nuriye ko kale ko bhikkhu upapano sariputamogalane su chitang agatetwa. So he says, and uh, the monk Kokalika was born in the, the Paduma hell uh, because of holding this, this hostile mind, this hostile attitude towards sariputamogalana. Um, and then the Buddha repeats the, the same verses that we saw in the previous one, the one about being born with an axe in one's mouth uh, by which a fool injures themselves and so on. So it's the end of these suttas. So again, these suttas were requested by Yudi. Um, so uh, just general reminder, if anybody has a particular sutta they want to be spoken about, you can always make requests. Um, but talking again about this sutta, so the emphasis on this sutta is on the power of speech. So often we think that speech doesn't really matter that much. That much more important is what we do with our body rather than what we say. Um, but this is not what the Buddha has to say on the matter. The Buddha actually placed a tremendous amount of importance on our speech, on the words that we use. Uh, and uh, this sutta, these two suttas in particular are really emphasizing this in that uh, the bhikkhu Kokalika, he didn't do anything particularly bad with his body. In fact, what little we have on this monk is that he was actually quite respectful towards the Buddha. Uh, but because he was you know, saying nasty things about awakened beings, then that was enough to generate extraordinarily bad karma. So we do want to be very careful. Uh, of course, it's hard to tell who's awakened and who's not. Um, so it's important to use kind and gentle and respectful speech towards everyone. Uh, so always keeping control of the, the acts in our mouth uh, and being careful to use it uh, for the benefit uh, of living beings and, and not as a way of expressing hostility. So that's the end of this discourse. We can respect the sutta with three sadhus. Sadhu. <laughs> Sadhu, sadhu. And at this time, I can take any questions that you might have related to this discourse. So hello to all the people joining in. So hello to John, Sud, Amaranta, Matthias, Adrian, Vivian, TJ, Jeff, Yankee, 
SB, Jayanta, Yuri, uh, Ashok, Taiwan, Ricky, Metta, Janaki, Jewel, Cam, Antonia, Si Yong, and Dan. Welcome to all of you. Um, and I actually don't see any questions related to the sutta. Um, so I do see one off topic question. So TJ has a question, but this is not related to the sutta. So it would be better to bring that question to Monk Chat tomorrow. Um, and yeah, so I see a couple of comments here. Um, so Yuri says, this sutta is a reminder to watch my speech, very powerful. I can't believe all the hells the Buddha mentioned. Yeah, samsara is incredibly varied. So samsara has everything from the absolute worst to the absolute best, it has everything. And depending on the choices we make, we can wind up anywhere within that spectrum. Uh, and so the Buddha's point here is that uh, just our, our speech, uh, is enough to bring us to even the worst parts of samsara. Uh, and correspondingly, actually, if you use speech correctly, you can also generate tremendous good karma. Mm -hmm. Piala and Indira say, mental karma is generally considered more powerful than verbal karma. Yeah, the Buddha says as much in other suttas that the most important karma is actually what we do with our mind. Uh, which is why it's so important to learn how to control our mind. Um, and actually verbal action comes from the mind. And bodily action comes from the mind. So ultimately the mind is what's most important. Uh, the mind is what determines uh, our body and our speech as well. And Sud says, why is it that actions done in the human realm have such dire consequences? It seems like Kokalika probably said bad stuff for a maximum of 40 years or so, but then he ended up suffering for like a long time. So it's not necessarily that our actions have more effect in the human realm. Uh, so that's not the point of these suttas. Um, the point of these suttas is that one's actions in relationship to awakened beings has a much stronger karmic weight than it does towards any other being. Uh, so uh, of course, mm, verbal karma is always powerful and we always need to be careful what we're saying uh, because it, it does generate bad karma to criticize or be hostile towards anyone. Um, but the point of the sutta is that karma is greatly magnified when one is relating to awakened beings. So what made Kokalika's actions particularly bad was that he was wrongly, falsely, maliciously condemning uh, two fully awakened monks. Uh, and even when directly told by the Buddha uh, that he was wrong and that he needed to stop, he still persisted. So this is another important point here is that Kokalika was told by the Buddha three times in a row to stop, that his views were wrong and he should stop. And three times in a row, Kokalika stuck to his view. Uh, so this also is a feature that we see in the suttas is this thing of being, uh, you kind of get three chances uh, to back out of of one's wrong views. And if you really stick to it, then that means you're, you're committed. You're committed to your wrong view, no matter what happens. So it's not necessarily that there were dire consequences because of it being in the human realm, um, but rather there were dire consequences because it was mm, hostile actions of, of speech and mind towards awakened beings in particular. And Yuri says, do you know if any other sutta mentions why Kokalika had ill will towards Saiput and Moggallana? I actually don't. Um, so I can do a quick search and see if it comes up anywhere. Mm. So Kokalika is not a, a major figure in the Pali Canon. 
Um, yeah, I'm not seeing anything. I'm just seeing there's a slightly different version of this sutta in the Anguttara Nikaya. Um, similarly, in the Kodaka Nikaya, uh, but it doesn't seem to give any explanation as to why Kokalika had a, a grudge against Sarputta and Mogalana. Um, so it's all speculation. Um, and the easiest speculation is jealousy. Um, but it's it's hard to say for sure because it's not clearly specified anywhere. And Sud asks, can hell beings practice to attain awakening? Yes, but it's very difficult. It's very difficult even to make ordinary good kamma. So the the main focus in the hell realms is to try to uh, make as little bad kama as possible and try to generate good kama so that one can be reborn in, in a higher realm, so preferably in a human realm. Um, so can hell beings practice to attain awakening? Theoretically, but realistically, the main focus is on getting out of the hell realms um, so that one has more supportive conditions for practicing uh, for awakening. Um, and it's... Um, yeah, I mean, you really don't want to, you don't want to go back to the hell realms. They're very unpleasant places and characterized by extreme pain and confusion. Uh, and generally speaking, one doesn't have access to the Dhamma uh, with very rare exception. So you also need to try to figure out for yourself uh, what good karma and bad karma are when one is in the hell realms. And Rick has a question which is off topic, so better to bring that to monk chat tomorrow evening. So it says, how does one make bad karma in a hell realm? I thought it was the result of one's actions, so he is really burning off bad karma. So yes, to be reborn in, in a hell realm is the result of bad karma, and that does also erode one's bad karma. So it's, uh, it is burning off bad karma in that sense. Um, but one is still making choices. Uh, so one can make choices which are wholesome or choices which are unwholesome, just as any in any other realm of existence. Um, and that's the last of the questions from online. Um, any questions from the monastery residents? Yeah, go ahead. Um, do beings in hell remember previous lives or have any sense of continuity? Some do and some don't um so yeah it's not universal but some do okay okay well i think that's it for this morning so we can go ahead and end with three sadhus sadhu 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 and we'll see you next time